Hello and a very warm welcome to you to our YouTube channel here at St Martin's Church in East Horsley. My name is Renos Pitarides and I'm the rector of the parish and if this is your first time joining us you are especially welcome. We're back holding services in the church but are committed to providing some online content uh, to help particularly those people who are not yet ready uh, to join us at the church. We're very privileged at St Martin's to have a, a number of preachers, both ordained and lay. And this week we welcome Robert Barnard, uh, who is one of our occasional preachers, who will be speaking to us shortly. But first, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Once more Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In these uncertain and troubled times, I found the passage from Paul's letters to the Philippians, the New Testament reading this morning, of great comfort. In marked contrast to the Gospel reading, which, albeit allegorical, being a parable, contains some hair-raising imagery. Refusals to accept a royal wedding invitation, murder and revenge killing, deliberate burning of the city, and the expulsion of a guest, as dressed ironically as friend, to outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, because he's not attired in an appropriate wedding robe. I appreciate there's a significant sermon opportunity in the passage from the Gospel, but we've had more than our fair share of difficult and confusing messages in the last seven months. So that's why I chose the more comforting and consoling passage. When Paul writes to the Philippians, he is in prison, but it is abundantly clear that the rigors of being in a Roman prison fail to dull his affection for the people of Philippi, for whom Paul says, I love and long for, and urging them to stand firm in the Lord. Indeed, the passage me reads more like a hymn, a song of benediction to the Lord, and contains those wonderful words enshrined in the closing blessing of our services, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When addressing the Philippians, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. We are reminded of Jesus' words in Matthew. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body and what you will wear. And again in John, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Paul continues, do not worry about everything, anything, but in ev everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. I suspect that living as we are in the grip of the pandemic, the experience is not unlike being in prison, both physically and mentally. We have become dependent on what we are told to do by the government, the medical profession and the scientists who are telling us what to do and how we are to behave 
in complete contrast to life pre-COVID. And the situation is further confused by the mixed messages we are receiving. Brilliantly satirized by Matt Lucas in his imitation of Boris Johnson. Go to work. No, don't go to work. However, given that the virus is still certainly with us without a vaccine in sight and a track and trace system that appears an abject failure, humour is pro probably inappropriate. But the impact it is having on all of us is wearing pretty thin as we crave to return to times when we could socially interact with families and friends and our church, of course, without having to observe the rule of six, wear a mask or socially distance. Our worshipping life, such an important element of this community, has been thrown into complete disarray. And I take this opportunity to heartily thank Renos and the St Martin's team for all their brilliant efforts to keep the spirit of community going through Zoom meetings and YouTube services. The Zoom Harvest Festival family service last Sunday was a triumph. Going back to the passage, Paul offers the Philippians and us all a wonderful catechism. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace be with you. In our current circumstances, I can think of no wiser, more meaningful and appropriate sentiments. Let us all think positively and focus on all the positive parts of our lives. Let us avoid all negativity. Complaining won't help as we're all in the same boat. And above all, let us observe God, God's second commandment, to love our neighbours as ourselves. As the community of St Martin's, I have believed we have amply demonstrated these values. So let's keep going. In the words of Paul, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Christ Jesus. Amen. Our thanks to Robert Barnard. If you'd like to join us again next time, our second occasional preacher, David Godwin, will be speaking to us. And so we end this short service with an organ piece by, uh, played by our organist Gareth Pont. It's called Tuba on Parade by John Marsh. But before that, let us share in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen.